So my name is Marta, and here is Milena and Alex. And we're here today to present the results of our quite recent work named Generic 120-Bit Math API. And since the title is, I think, quite self-explaining, I think we can proceed directly to the agenda. So um, I'm going to do like a short introduction on what we did and why did we do that. Milena will give you uh, some overview on, on the math that it requires to be uh, implemented in our code, along with the test description, so the performance impact of our code. I'm going to present the test results and the future work, along with the, with the summary of what we did. OK, so as a short introduction, as probably, well, at least I think so, you know, uh, as of 2020, uh, we don't have 128 bit uh, computer architecture for now. And uh, we really don't need it since for now, the most demanding applications, they require up to like six or seven terabytes uh, of DRAM. <clears throat> when the 64-based uh, architecture provides up to uh, 17 exabytes of uh, RAM support. But you know, not having this architecture doesn't mean that we don't need a code that support it since 128 bit logic is used in, in some other architectures, uh, I mean, in some other applications. Um, so now I'm gonna give you a short interview of, uh, oh, sorry, I just got stressed. Okay, so uh, in this work, we propose a generic API that can uh, support 128 bit math uh, in the Linux kernel, and this API is ready to be used in precision time protocol implementation, but it's not the only usage. And now I'm going to shortly describe what this API can be used for besides the, 100, uh, besides the PTP protocol. So we have a couple of places in which 128-bit based uh, variables are used. For example, we have hardware performance accelerators, such as SSE, which is SIMT uh, extensions. This is a set of registers and operations implemented in Intel's processors to accelerate the uh, the audio, like um, the encryption and, and encryption. We also have graphic accelerators, which have 128-bit based path between the processor and memory. Of course, we have 128-bit based key in cryptography. And besides uh, that, there are some more like uh, you know well-defined usages. For example, MD5 hash it produces 128-bit results. We have ZFS that is 128-bit based file system, and of course IPv6 operates on a 128-bit range of addresses. But since we're on a net dev, we have to talk about you know networking. So one of the biggest places in which we see our implementation is just the uh, precision time protocol uh, implementation. And we basically talked about the PTP last year um, on our session. And also Matej gave, like uh, Matej Magnitowski, he gave a very big overview of what is it. So I'm, I think I will just skip, you know, the, the whole theory. Mm, I will only say that uh, PTP, uh, you know, it is used in, in very many places, such as 5G implementation, um, distributed databases, uh, but also um, other places. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, just to quickly summarize of what I said. So for now, there are some processors that support 128-bit based native operations. And in this case, what we did, it, it is not really needed, but other architectures, such as 32-bit based, um, they don't do it. So um, we just have created uh, an API, like a unified one, that can be used to, to you know, have the same support on, on every platforms. And um, yeah, just to do also a short introduction of what Milana will tell you about. I also wanted to explain that 128-bit uh, comparison, addition, and subtraction, it doesn't really require you know, any complicated algorithms. Um, but on the opposite, multiplication and division is quite um, uh, complex. So Milana will give you like an overview of what is needed. 
Yeah, so before going to the division and multiplication algorithms, I would like to show you some numbers just to give you an overview how big the 128 bits uh, variables are. So as you know, 128 bit processors are used to addressing two to the power of 128 uh, bytes. So what we compared to that? So this is the number greater than the total data captured process on the earth in 2018. So this is even more than that. So you can, as you can imagine, we need to deal with enormous numbers. We, I think we have one slide missing, some slide missing. Okay, but anyway, let's focus on the uh, the range uh, on the next slide, which is, uh, we, we have it missing here and we see it there. So this is the range of these uh, variables. As you can see, it's not easy to calculate on that. We need to introduce some math to operate on these numbers. Um, it's not trivial algorithm to make a division in, in a multiplication. That's why I will introduce a short and I think easy notation that will be applied to, to our algorithms. And um, we'll introduce also some math theory to, to make you easier, to make it easier to, to implement. Okay, so this is the notation. Uh, what we have here, in case of uh, division and multiplication, the following notation has been used. So we have two equations here. I would like to pay your attention that we have the number B in the equation one, which we'll call the base of B. Uh, between the A0 and N A minus one, we have dot, which will be called the radix, uh, the, the radix dot. And also, um, probably all of you know this notation because when we have the some when we meet some requirements to B and A, so the B is greater than one and A is required to be in the range of zero and B, we'll receive the standard system that we all know. For for example, for B equal to two, it will be binary. Ternary for B equal to t, uh, to three, and quaternary where B is equal to to four. And uh, also, I would like to remember that we'll talk in the later, uh, later slides on this presentation, we'll talk about the base, the, the B number. Um, let's define some naming. So the dot, as I said before, it's called the radix, radix point. Uh, in some notation in binary system, it's, it's called the binary point in the decimal system when B is equal to 10, it's a decimal point, et cetera. And we have some digits here. In this equation, A's are called the digits of representation. And again, in the system that we all know, binary system, the binary digits are called bits. Uh, in hexadecimal system, the digits from 0 to 15 are uh, denoted as 0, uh, 1, 2, through F. And the rightmost digit and the left modes are called uh, least significant digit and most significant digit, uh, respectively. So that's what we need, need to know to introduce the, the algorithms. OK, here is the short example of, the, of this algorithm. Uh, this is the notation again, and this uh, short, this, um, short example how you can use it. Uh, I can see it now, but as far as I remember, it was 815 to the base of 6. So it's easy to calculate that it's 8 times 6 squared plus 5 times 6 plus 0. So 850 to the base of B to the base of 6 is 318. Okay, so let's focus on uh, calculating this, with, uh, on dealing with these huge numbers on, on computers. So let's assume that we have two numbers, U and B, 
uh, that we would like to multiply, divide, whatever. So the most crucial part of uh, implementing these algorithms is to understand what is the radix B notation in case of computers. So let's assume like in this example on this slide that we need to, that we have the, the integer that fills 10 words when the computer word size is 10 to the power of 10. So in fact, we have two things here. The first is that we have 100 um, decimal digit. And what is more important to us before implementing the algorithm is that we'll have 10 place number to the base uh, to the base 10 to the power power of 10. So the, the place number means that in the U we have U M plus, plus N minus one. So this is the M plus N minus one place number for us. Okay, and this is this is the multiplication algorithm. Um, I'm not going to go through this one uh, step by step uh, because it's this detail described in our uh, article and that's where you can find all the find all the details. Also it's uh, I think it's commented in, in our pres uh, in our implementation. But uh, I would like to just pay your attention to the fact that we have two numbers to the base of B. The base is exactly the same, and we'll receive a product uh, W to the base of the same uh, to the base of the same number uh, B. And what is the difference between the this algorithm and the standard pencil and paper method that you probably all of you used in the primary school? I think. So, yeah, okay, I cannot see it. Here I have. Okay, it's there. Okay, so I'll try to take a look. Um, okay, so the difference here is it should be the a multiplication algorithm difference. So the difference here is that when you need to uh, multiply two numbers, you're doing the products, uh, products in the loop, in fact, uh, and you, at the end, add these products with the appropriate scaled factors. So we are doing it step by step, while in the computer, in our algorithm, the uh, addition and multiplication is done simultaneously. And the same for division. It's even more complex algorithm, in fact, that we implemented. And this is the description. Again, I wouldn't like to go step by step because it, it will take long hours, I think. But I would like to uh, pay attention to the fact that we have two numbers that we would like to divide, the div dividend and divisor. Um, the same base, again, we have the two numbers to the base of B. And so what we receive is quotient. So the, the QM to Q0 to the base of B again, and the remainder, so the rest uh, of this division. This algorithm is a little bit longer and takes a little bit uh, more time to understand the math step by step, but if anybody is interested, I will encourage to uh, catch us on, uh, on mail or here. So we can explain a little bit more. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so here is the, the end of this algorithm that we implemented. And we now we can go to the next slide to the introduced API. The next slide, please. Okay, so this is the um, APIs that we introduced. This is the beginning. So the proposed APIs create, defines the, structure, the structures that represent unsigned 128-bit uh, based variables. So the first structure is uh, dividing the, this number to the four times uh, 32 bits. And the second is two times 64 bits. 
And if you have a support for 128, you can operate on 128 variables. And uh, this is the basic definition of, of these numbers in our API. The next, okay, so in general, the functions that we implemented are divided in five main groups. So it is a comparison, so we can compare which number is greater, which is less, and are, or are they the same. Uh, addition, subtraction, so the easiest part, and also the multiplication and, and division of uh, two numbers. All of the function, all of these functions are listed in our article, listed and described. So, if you are interested, I would, uh, I would recommend to to get familiar with that. Next slide, please. And this is the the simple example of usage. So you have um, dividend and you have divisor. So we will, of course, divide the dividend by divisor, and as a result, we have a variable. 128 variable called result and we also have the remainder and this is the the naming of the functions are pretty consistent so this is just the example but it shows the pattern in fact so here you are dividing 128 by 128 and the first thing you need to do is to store 128 variables and to provide a um, address to the to the reminder okay so in fact one of uh, our crucial um, parts of our poc was to provide a um, stable performance we didn't want to negatively influence the uh, the performance so we wanted to make some tests and these are the this is are the function that were used to to check to check uh, the, the performance and to check the, uh, how the calculations are working in, in real time. So the first function that has been used is uh, IPTP uh, adjust fine. In fact, this function allows to adjust the clock increment rate. In other words, it adjusts the frequency of the clock by the indicated scaled PPM from the frequency base. And we choose this function twice. The, set, the first one is from 5.19.5 uh, Linux kernel, the second from 0 6.0, because in 6.0, this function was optimized. And we, were, uh, we wanted to check, we're uh, curious, what is the influence from the optimization and uh, what will be the difference. And the third function, it is the native 128-bit function directly related to PTP. It calculates the ratio between ticks of the clock and nanoseconds. So ticks to nanosecond and nanosecond uh, to ticks. It's from um, Intel out of the out of the tree driver. And this is the procedure. So the, uh, each operation was repeated. 10,000 times and uh, before and after each operation we took the timestamp so based on the two timestamps we could calculate the difference expressed in nanoseconds um, we did the measurements with and without the 128 API usage uh, each test was repeated several times 10 times to provide the stability and to make sure that everything is uh, is working and also to, um, to reduce the noise, we disabled interrupts. And uh, on the next slide, Marta will show you test results. Okay, so <clears throat> right now on the slide, you can see the difference that uh, we've introduced it within the first test. So that was, I think, kernel 5.19 and the ptp at just find function uh, you know it's just a set of numbers but i want to i want you to take a look at the fact that we are here talking about the nanoseconds and you know even though the number that uh that represents the difference uh is quite large we're talking about ten thousand loops right so uh, the difference itself it's not very big but our goal was you know to do not really influence performance but to introduce unified 
um, API that can be used not only in the PTP, but you know, for other solutions that I described before. Um, the same will happen with the second test. So um, we have here the kernel 6.0, as Milana mentioned before. Uh, there was there were there were a patch or there was a patch that introduced some you know uh, fixes to the PTP at just fine. So we also wanted to check if you know what we did the test if it's still valid. And then there is also a third test with a different function, um, in which we also can see that our API did not uh, you know introduce any negative uh, <coughs> performance related you know site effects right. Um, just to quickly summarize uh, the tests. So I want to you know, clearly state in here that um, our API not only did not introduce any negative side effects, it also you know, influenced the performance in a, in a good way. Um, and operation time was reduced by our code to up to 500 something uh, microseconds, again, per 10,000 loops. So in terms of feature work, you know, this code exists for now in some of our internal repo. So this will be upstreamed. Hopefully you will be, you know, we'll be happy to receive some comments and, and to do the best with, we can with, with the code. Um, yeah, and later, you know, because we are going to upstream it along with the fixes to the PTP, but we're really hoping that this will be also used for other subsystems in Linux kernel. And to summarize hold the presentation, um, you know, we, we are here to propose the solution, which is very easy to use kernel API that supports 120 bit variables in, in operations for, for the kernel. Um, for addition, subtraction and comparison, this API is, you know, built with very basic uh, operations the multiplication and division algorithm is, you know, a bit more complicated, as you might have heard from Milena today. Uh, but if you will, you know, be lacking some knowledge and how to how to understand that, you can, you know, download the paper that we have created for for, for this presentations and read it, or also reach us out on our emails so we can explain why and what. Um, it's also very important to mention that this API. Uh, it did not influence performance in a bad way. It even uh, fixed the time a bit. And besides, you know, having the better performance, we also have way better precision uh, as we have um, eliminated the denomination. So I think it's good. <laughs> um, this slide is not very ready. We have only one reference. Uh, but it's the most important one since this is the source of the algorithm. We have also to make it clear that we did not, you know, figure out this uh, algorithm ourselves. It's from the book. You can find this book uh, under this reference. But if you, you know, if you want, if you're curious about the other references, again, please see our paper. And now we have a time Q and A. But I also have to say that Alex is the one who will take the Q and A. So Alex, you can come here. Good questions. Okay. Mike. You have to repeat the question. Right? Okay. Thank you. Um, I uh, didn't make a uh, performance benchmark with existing mathematical routines in uh, the Linux kernel, like uh, use it in uh, crypto. And I believe there is already uh, division because division is used in, uh, I guess, elliptic curves or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah sure. So, uh, do, yeah. so the yeah. point is that uh, there's already plenty of uh, division and multiplication in implementations in mathematical routines like in the Linux kernel, in Wolf's cell, open cell, the pretty strong in uh, implementation and performance. Uh, and did you make any performance evaluation in comparison with that existing implementations? Do you mean uh, long integers? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, but 
Log integers is not like one-liners, right? Yeah. And this one is most of times. Well, uh, anytime. Uh, so what, what is one liner? Uh, you can uh, work with them pretty much like you work with 32-bit or 64-bit variables with details, some details, but um, MPI is not that um, simple, right? But, um, well, um, um, basically, for, for example, uh, there are different uh, approaches. Uh, the one is, um, for example, is uh, MBTOS. You, you know, it's an um, open source uh, yes. crypto library, and they have a designated uh, MPI implementation. And you can uh, operate with a long integer in pretty um, easy, easy way, like this. Uh, fixed um, multiplication, uh, subtraction, wh whatever. And uh, the other approaches like use it in uh, OpenSSL or WolfSSL is pretty optimized implementation when you have to uh, specify exact uh, register, exact uh, size of the operation and uh, so on. So like if you have a generic implementation, you lose performance. If you have more performance, then you need to sacrifice readability. So is it correct that your implementation is about uh, better readability, sacrificing performance? No. It's like uh, simplicity and just unifying stuff because currently in the kernel, there is some like stuff like we mentioned PTP, which does denomination where it doesn't fit in 64. Also we have a uh, role uh, U128 uh type usage in several maybe up to 10 something uh crypto uh drivers or modules whatever and they like they use this ones we need bit type but they uh each of them uh, use it like in a row and with definitions with compare uh, with uh, like um checking if uh, the architecture supports it and stuff and stuff. And uh, one of the um, goals was uh, to like unify all of that and just one header file and don't mess it with like each source file. Um, doesn't make sense. And also it's like, it's not uh, like multi-precision or mm -hmm. big uh, like one 100 digit integers it just and we need bit, which uh, mostly uh, just uses uh, one to need bit registers of modern CPUs and provides fallbacks like seamless fallbacks for other architectures. I believe the key factor here is that you know modern CPUs will support one twenty eight bits operations in like natively so you can just use the cpu registers load it there and use one operation and that's the you know the the what the api that was developed here is kind of a fallback for those cpus who don't uh, have this have this hardware right so, so it, it, um, specifically for 128 not for you know extend that you eat and so on okay unfortunately the there was no a uh, slide about internal implementation, like which instruction set you use or which registers, uh, does makes uh, does mean that you do not use a single instruction multiple data uh, uh, extensions like uh, SSE uh, four point two or whatever. But I, I get I get uh, I believe you mentioned that you do use SSE for the operations, right? I do so. I mean, it exists not only on x eighty six. Okay. And it's just yeah. it, it, it mostly what we do is uh, we test the size of, of uh, like that this type exists in um, NGCC or in compilator for uh, for the target architecture and uh, uh, produces code without uh, libgc calls and uh, this pretty much means that. It supports it. So in your implementation way. is a pure C implementation without any assembly, right? Uh, is yes, your, yes. 
Okay. But the compiler then resolves it to uh, okay. optimize instructions itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the answers. Uh, personally, I would love to see benchmarks uh, comparison with uh, this arithmetic with any existing. So, preferably yeah, sure. strong like uh, open cell or wolf cell. So, may maybe that would be good to have before going upstream. So. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? And by the way, I'm talking about this match marks. So the numbers, I believe. Wait a second. Yeah. So while well, we are talking about this benchmark, so I believe that uh, the numbers were taken on the Intel platform, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And have you tested it on any other platforms like ARM? Because no. I, so. I believe mm -hmm. for the upstreaming, we have to prove that there is no regression in, def in different. Yes. Sure. Yes, it's like <laughs> not that we want upstream, it just having. Uh, only those results that we presented today. OK, OK, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on, just one more. <laughs> no? Yes, something you know, tricky, like, uh, what's your name? Alexander. Oh. <laughs> tricky ones, like Alexander asked. I wasn't ready for that. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>